Hi there and welcome to our Asteroid Day 2020 and our digital panel from satellites to asteroids, Luxembourg and ESA's roles. Now Luxembourg has established itself as a European centre for the space industry and for the past 15 years it has worked in close partnership with ESA. Now during that time Luxembourg has gone from being a leader in satellite communications to launching the Space Resource Initiative and setting up the European Space Resources Innovation Centre. Coordinated by the Luxembourg Space Agency, the country is set to play a key role in the development of lunar activities, and they're also taking an active role in current and future asteroid missions, such as ESA's HERO and Margo spacecraft. Now I'm Sarah Crodis, and joining me today is Sarah Fleischer, who's the economic advisor at the Luxembourg Space Agency. Matthias Link, who is the director of international affairs at the Luxembourg Space Agency, Alexandra Finch, who is the lead avionics engineer at Deep Space Industries, and Ian Connelly, who is the HERA mission manager at ESA. Welcome all of you and thank you so much for being here. Matthias, I'm going to start with you and can you talk us through why Luxembourg decided to position itself as a European hub for commercial space? Yes, of course. Thank you, Sarah. So it, it dates back, of course, into the 1980s so when Luxembourg decided to create SES, the first uh, satellite company here in Luxembourg. And at that time, we draw on our background in telecommunications, radio communications, terrestrial communications. So it was a natural step to extend those into space. And it was really the first uh, endeavor of Luxembourg in space. And what is important to note is it's, it was a commercial endeavor already at that time. And since then, the Luxembourg space sector has grown in size, of course, first centered around telecom and with suppliers and customers of SES also settling in Luxembourg and starting in Luxembourg. But then over time, the sector become, became more and more diversified. And uh, the government of Luxembourg noted that it's actually a sector worth to support even more and to diversify in the end the Luxembourg economy around it. And that, uh, that is what happened, especially in the last 15 years, when we developed a very active policy at the level of the government to develop the space sector, while still keeping this very strong commercial focus of, of space. Uh, we became a member of the European Space Agency in, two, in 2005, and since then have participated in a variety of programs at the European Space Agency, of course, very strongly in the satellite, in the SATCOM, programs in the ARTES programs, but not only over time it grew and we have today around 50 companies in Luxembourg that are active in the whole value chain of space. And of course, the, what you mentioned, the latest move in 2016 was to focus on space resource utilization, of course, strongly connected then to uh, getting resources from the moon, from asteroids and using those resources in space to in the longer term develop an in-space economy. And that has really brought a whole new dynamism also into the Luxembourg space sector, leading all the way down to a very intense cooperation with ESA, especially in the exploration domain, and also uh, leading to this idea of developing the European Space Resource Innovation Center in Luxembourg together with ESA. And I think it's fair to say that really, um, in terms of the commercial space sector, uh, although this has been something people have been talking about maybe in the mainstream for the last five years or so, Luxembourg really has been ahead of the game when it comes to commercial space and how to translate space from being a place to go to a place to do business. Why do you think that is? Why has Luxembourg had such success so far? I think in a certain sense, of course, we were lucky that our first very, our very first venture in space was extremely successful. SES is today one of the largest satellite operators in the world. And so, of course, this gave a very good uh, initial experience with commercial space that we then, of course, also try to replicate in other areas of, of space. But I think another reason is that Luxembourg as a country is, of course, very small. And so our space budgets in total are in absolute size are small with respect to other countries. And so the, the only way to develop sustainable and viable space activities is actually to focus on commercial space and to bring in not only public investors, but also private investors. And um, Sarah, can you talk us through the, the successes that Luxembourg has had so far in the satellite side of things? Because obviously that was where Luxembourg originally focused. Especially as Matthias just mentioned, um, we had this huge success story with SES and we're kind of using that to draw a lot of attention to young entrepreneurs 
who want to tag along with the new, I would say, evolution that we're seeing at the moment in the space industry. Everything regarding to new space, down, uh, let's say, downlink um, applications, data that is coming from satellites. So we have a lot of companies here that are creating services using the data coming from satellites. Um, and that has been quite successful. So we have various companies here like Spire, one of them, um, one of the bigger startups here, but we have many other um, smaller, still growing um, startups here as well. Um, and it has been good so far and we're seeing more attention um, also from neighboring countries where entrepreneurs are getting the attention um, of Luxembourg and willing to come here to basically join this new space hub that we're creating here in Luxembourg. And when it comes to investing in space, you can almost see the, the reasons why investors would want to, as you said, invest in downstream applications, so utilizing the vantage point of space to improve life on Earth. But when we come to things like asteroids and asteroid minings and, and what we call in the industry upstream applications, Surely the investors who are going to join in that, they're, they're market creating investors because this is something that's never been done before. So is it a different type of investor? And, and how do you encourage that new type of investment, which is, of course, going to carry risk with it? Totally. It's it's completely different. Um, it's not going to be like any like any other ICT investment at all. Um, the, the thing is, is that there's almost no commercial market yet there um, regarding to space resources. Um, this is but we believe in luxembourg that this is for sure going to happen in the next decades and we as luxembourg we basically made a decision that we for now already um want to basically prepare ourselves and already supported companies that will provide the essential technologies that we will then use um, and facilitate um, to enable space resources um, so coming to which type of investor, of course, governments, it's going to be a role of governments to support that. So we here at LSA and Matthias will probably talk about that a little bit later, uh, kind of like the next steps that LSA is taking to support space resources a little bit further. Um, but what one should not forget that the main challenges that we're facing in space resources um, is also very much linked to the main challenges that we face on Earth, right? So we have, for example, if we live on the moon, um, we will need energy. How do we produce energy as most efficient as possible? And energy is, of course, a very crucial topic that we are facing here on Earth as well. Then anything around agriculture, food production, we have similar topics here in urban farming, vertical farming. How can we integrate that with um, space resources as well? And we see that as space resources, so anything that grows um outside of earth <laughs> we uh, um, we see that as space resources um or let's say auto automation autonomous driving robotics these are all components that are necessary um to build up something in space um if we take again the example of building a moon um habitat um 3d printing of things so these are really interesting elements that even investors are keen to find solutions now already and we see a lot of links between terrestrial use cases in various industries um, where perhaps the space technologies in space resources could help here um, or vice versa we can take technologies that are already existent and perhaps use them for space resources applications so essentially what you're saying is um what we're doing in space what we need to shift our mindset because what we're doing in space in terms of exploring is no different to what we've done on earth you wouldn't take the kitchen sink with you if you were going to go on holiday somewhere on earth so as we push forward in space we need to utilize the resources very readily available to us instead of relying on, on resupply ships from earth because ultimately space exploration will become lower cost and, and we can go further exactly uh, it's basically the main vision behind this whole initiative is making space more sustainable um sinking the cost of accessing space at all. Um, so these are going to be the key drivers to make this happen. And forgive me, because this is going to be an impossible question. Um, but in terms of we know this is going to happen. We know this is our next step of an exploring space. But in terms of a market lead time, do we yet know a point when this is going to become profitable or, or when this is something that will be a, a viable alternative to the way that we currently exist in space? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, we hope it's going to happen much earlier than uh, we think. Um, I mean, people are talking about 
10 years, 20 years, we don't know when this market will really evolve. Um, but through the progress that we see at the moment, you know, Artemis mission, uh, the Americans going back to the moon and other nations following up, um, I believe that the market will be created much earlier than we think. Um, and we in Luxembourg just want to be ready and be able to be one of the leading countries in this field. Well, I think that's a great answer to an impossible question. Um, and I really do think so far in terms of um, commercial space, Luxembourg, really, you guys have been ahead of the game. So you've done a great job so far. And I think it is an impossible question, but you're right. It's this case of we know it's happening and we know we, we need these resources, but we don't know the exact timing yet. But change is happening in the commercial space industry much faster than you, you can realize. And I'm going to bring in Alexandra now, who's from Deep Space Industries, which is, of course, an asteroid mining company, which sounds like something out of science fiction when you say it out loud, but it is a reality. Now, Alexandra, asteroid mining um, sounds like it's a no brainer, but there's many challenges that we currently face. Can you just talk us through some of the challenges at the moment and how you're working to overcome them? Certainly, yeah. So uh, going into visit an asteroid is, is something that humans have done before. You know, we've sent spacecraft even today going to asteroids. But the real challenge is doing it in a commercially sensible and cost effective way. Um, and, and there are some technical problems with, with doing that. Um, uh, things like propulsion. Um, the asteroids, either they're very far away or they're moving very fast. And, to get to them, to, to, to go meet those asteroids, you kind of need to have a big rocket to, to accelerate you to meet them. Uh, you also have problems like navigation. Um, there's no GPS in, in deep space where these asteroids are. You can't just take out a sat nav or a map. You kind of have to work out where you are in this big blackness of space. And then you also have to work out where the asteroids are. And you know, not well known, but asteroids are like as black as coal. They're really hard to see in the blackness of space. Uh, so sometimes just finding the asteroids can be quite tricky. Uh, and then perhaps another problem uh, is, is that of communications, uh, trying to communicate uh, with something that far away. I mean, if you took your cell phone uh, 100 million miles from Earth and, and tried to get a signal, you'd have a difficulty. And that's, that's kind of the problem we have with spacecraft as well. So do you think, as a good point you mentioned, do you think um, when you talk about communications and deep space communications, um, wanting to mine asteroids is actually helping to develop a new part of the space industry in terms of private deep space communication companies. Yes, yes. So, uh, so far, uh, if you want to communicate with, with, um, with a spacecraft, a small or big in, in deep space, you have to use these very large antennas on Earth. Uh, some of these are wider, the satellite dishes are wider than the leaning power of Pisa is, is tall. So they're, they can be really gigantic, these things. And operating a big giant antenna like that uh, on Earth is, is expensive. And you know, as we build more and more spacecraft going to asteroids and planets, there are just not enough of them to communicate with everything. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do here in Luxembourg is, is develop a new radio system that allows you to communicate and, and navigate a spacecraft that is uh, really far from Earth, but without the associated cost of these giant, uh, of these giant dishes. And do you think that's been one of the, the great things about you guys having a base in Luxembourg that you're able to communicate with all these other space companies and it's really Luxembourg as a country has brought together a multitude of commercial space companies in order to drive forward this new industry? Yes, yeah, I mean the, the excitement is, is palpable but also the connections are very useful. Um, I, I find actually a, a, a thematic joy in knowing that one of the things we're doing, one of the, the high tech solutions to talking to asteroids or spacecraft asteroids is to use high frequency communications uh, and this is what Luxembourg has been using for 30 years to communicate with the televisions on earth with the broadcast so we're, we're using some of the expertise that's already here uh, to to you to solve this new problem so really there's a crossover between the learnings we've had from satellites and from the earlier era of space exploration and this new era of commercial space exploration and, and doing all the things which sound impossible right now. Yeah, well, uh, much like uh, 30 years ago when uh, satellites uh, broadcasting TV from geostationary was impossible, uh, so to the asteroids today um, and some of the solutions are the same uh, in both cases. And I, I have to ask you, because much of what we're, we're looking at doing with asteroids and um, is resources and um, to enable us to go further into space but there is also the potential the asteroid belt for example between uh, the planets mars and jupiter 
has said to have enough wealth in minerals to redefine wealth on Earth. And there is the potential to return minerals from asteroids. How far into the future do you think something like that is? Uh, you asked a bunch of people, you'll find the answers from 10 years to 100 years. Uh, we clearly hope it's uh, or expect it's closer to 10 years um, on that scale. But uh, it will happen gradually. Uh, it'll start with relatively small spacecraft taking small samples for almost scientific purposes and prospecting and understanding how to do it. And it will scale up over time as other industries have done in the past. And the end goal here isn't necessarily, I mean, we don't quite know where this will end up, but the, it's not necessarily to bring metals to earth for factories down here, but you could actually think bigger and move the factories into space. And, and remove a whole bunch of problems that we have on the Earth due to industrialization down here. I think that's a really great point you make because I think so much of space exploration is actually about Earth and it's about using resources in space and the vantage point that, that space gives us to protect Earth. So the idea of manufacturing in space is a great point and thank you very much. I'm just going to move on to Ian now and Ian I'm so jealous of your job because you are involved with ESA's HERA mission so you're going to be helping to explore an asteroid. Can you just talk us through a bit more about the mission and your involvement. Yes, Sarah. So yes, it's my it's my honor to talk about AIR, which I believe is one of the best missions we've uh, put together in the last years. Uh, HERA is part of a international endeavor to actually test our technologies to deflect an asteroid, so to protect uh, planet Earth from potential impacts of asteroids. That's the main objective. So uh, the DART mission from NASA will launch actually next year on a Falcon 9 and impact the small moon of a binary system. So it's a binary asteroid, uh, which will come very close to the Earth in October 22. So the, 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 the objective of the DART mission is to give a little push to the, to the moon and demonstrate our, our guidance systems, but also the effects of this push. Then comes the HERA mission launched in 24. It's a ESA mission, and it will rendezvous with the asteroid in 2026, uh, a little bit after December. Uh, we'll stay around the asteroid for six months, and our objective is really to investigate all the tiny details of the asteroids to understand what actually occurred during the, amp the impact and uh, the results of the impact. And to do that, we need to characterize both asteroids, the interior structure, what they're made of, their physical dynamical properties, their, their material their strength and so on. So we'll, we'll learn a lot about these asteroids. And I have to ask, what does it mean to you to be involved in, in this kind of exciting mission? Uh, it's like a kid's dream, huh? since I've been uh, watching uh, movies and science fiction movies from Star Wars to, you know, where you always see these asteroids, it's really a dream. And the fact that it's uh, fascinating people, you know, when we give talks with kids and you see how much they connect with the mission, they, they, they get interested in space activities, they get interested in scientific studies, uh, STEM education. This is really giving me a lot of energy to continue and work on this mission. And, and how are the team on HERA, um, and that was a fantastic answer to that question, by the way, um, but how are the team on HERA working with the Luxembourg Space Agency? What's the collaboration there? So Luxembourg is one of our main partners and actually is the, one of the partners that is bringing in uh, one of the largest piece of innovations in the mission because we're going to bring with us for the first time two CubeSats uh, in deep space. And uh, one of these CubeSats uh, is made in Luxembourg. Uh, and uh, it, not only it's the first CubeSat to reach an asteroid, but it will also be the first CubeSat to, to uh, carry with it a, a penetrating radar to probe the interior structure of an asteroid. And it will actually be the first uh, ever mission to probe the interior structure of an asteroid. So lots of firsts in, uh, in Luxembourg. It's, it, so you, you have to think about it like uh, small drones uh, that we will release once we, we get uh, to Didymos and they have the ability of getting closer with much lower risk to the surface of the, the asteroids and understand and get a lot more details than we would do from further away. So it's really, uh, it's really interesting. Now on top of the, let's say, the technology itself, there's also the software side of it, things, which is very important because some of the technologies we'll be demonstrating are related to for example, autonomous navigation. Uh, so we're talking about uh, autonomous cars. Well, these are the, these will be autonomous drones, and uh, these are very important technologies also for the future for companies uh, that will want to actually uh, interact uh, with uh, probes 
and eventually extract uh, resources because at some point you will need to automate these processes you will uh, you will not be able to control all these probes from ground so you will need to develop this level of autonomy and that's where uh, the Luxembourgish uh, CubeSat uh, brings in all of the interesting technologies. So there's a huge crossover then it's not just pushing the limits of space but it's also bringing again benefit here on benefits here on earth. Absolutely absolutely and it's for the benefit of the future missions so HERA is actually a very multidisciplinary mission because it's it has a very strong, of course, planetary defense uh, flavor and objectives, but it also brings a lot of knowledge to the scientific community in terms of understanding of, uh, of asteroids, because we still know very little about these bodies. Every time we reach these bodies, we learn a lot. And then, as I said, in terms of technologies that will benefit a lot of missions, of course, uh, for future uh, resources utilization, but also deep, deep space exploration. So it's really... Uh, a lot of disciplinary dis disciplines are, are, are involved, a lot of knowledge, a lot of scientific uh, fields. So it will be very, very exciting. And I have to ask, how has Asteroid Day um, helped with the work of ESA and the HERA mission? Well, asteroids until 15, 20 years ago were not very sexy <laughs> in the communities. If you look at the scientific papers, if you want, um, uh, there was very little interest and very little research done. Uh, most of the interest was, as I said, in the science, science fiction movies or, you know, in kids' uh, history books and the dinosaurs. Um, now, uh, in the last years, uh, a lot of interest developed because actually they're remnants from the history of the solar system. Uh, so learning about asteroids actually ultimately tells us where we are from, where we come from, how we formed. Uh, so for ESA, it's been uh, a 20 years journey to get uh, to this point, and I'm very excited that uh, many countries are now supporting the HERA mission and the future activities in this field. Okay, wonderful. And final question just to Mateus, uh, actually, and it's just if you could just uh, quickly tell us about the, the future for space and for Luxembourg. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, very exciting. I think uh, you have seen also in the different answers, just given that the topic is extremely complex. You have, of course, a strong focus on technology and on science. Uh, you have a focus on investment, but on top of this, you have uh, new markets that need to be created. You have a whole international dimension in uh, coming up with frameworks on how to regulate these activities. There's also strong legal uh, um, aspects that are connected. So the whole field of, of, of going for, ex for further exploration of our solar system, uh, looking at asteroids, looking at the moon, and in the end also using the resources from these element, from these. Uh, elements uh, will be extremely challenging and extremely complex and we are of course very determined of continuing our path in supporting this and promoting space resource utilization and uh, for us uh, Jan and uh, Isa are definitely very strong partners to to also uh, engage in the next steps and we have I mentioned it initially we have now planned to set up a European Space Resource Innovation Center in Luxembourg that will focus on research on business, but also on community management, all to uh, bring Europe forward in this uh, domain. And in the end, also work with other international centers all around the world on this uh, very exciting topic. And I'm very confident that uh, looking back at what happened over the last five years since we launched spaceresources.eu, if I project this into the future, the, there were definitely things coming up, very exciting things. And um, and yeah, probably we all, of course we all hope that we will be able to um, to achieve this very ambitious timing that has been mentioned by both Sarah and also Alexander here. And I think all of us today are the lucky ones because 50 years ago, when humans first started exploring space, it was just about flags and footprints, so to speak. But now we're actually alive at a time when we're extending our presence into space permanently. Um, I just wanted to finish by asking you, Matthias, um, what does it mean to you? to be involved in this and this part of our, our human story of going in space in this way. It is absolutely exciting to, to be able to live this one because of course we, we know we, we still have all our history books uh, about the Apollo missions and the race to the moon in the 1960s. Here in Luxembourg, we have of course the example of SES that every Luxembourger knows that is uh, an extreme, uh, extremely large success for our country. And now we feel everything is coming together because we are somehow replicating these commercial endeavors in exploration, going back to the moon, but this time 
going back to stay there and to 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 stay there for the longer term and develop moon bases and and have people living on the moon on a permanent permanent basis and then of course also going then to asteroids and understanding them better and so I, I think this is definitely something that we will all still see in our lifetime lifetimes and of course that's that's very exciting to 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 see and also to be able to shape it in a certain sense i can see sarah nodding on next to you as well <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for your time. I wish we had longer with, with all of you. Um, Matea, Sarah, Ian and Alexandra, you, you've all been incredible. And I think the, the role that Luxembourg is playing as a country in helping to drive forward this commercial space um, era that we're entering into is hugely significant. So thank you for all of you for your time and thank you for your work and happy Asteroid Day. <laughs>